Thank you for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe. Oh, and don't forget the alert bell. job for today is to change the transmission fluid. Many of you may know already that there is no drain plug. To get at the fluid is quite difficult but I have managed to do that and you can see it's not a very good colour so it desperately needs changing. So anyway the fluid will be changed but it's not it's not a flush um, so in, in reality you're only going to change I don't know maybe half the fluid um, difficult to say. Now to help me do this I've bought a DC pump which was extremely cheap off eBay. In, in American dollars it's probably like 15, 16 American dollars and it's it, very 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 good. Um, what happens is you've got, a, you've got a pipe that you slide down the dipstick hole so you can suck the fluid out which makes life easier underneath because then you don't have a pan full of fluid. I'm going to suck the fluid out into a container so we can know how much we've got in there. Then I'm going to change the, the pan for one that's got a drain plug in it. Obviously the filter and the gasket all at the same time. My next task is to read the instruction on the dipstick because that tells you a lot about what you need to do. Here is the end segment of the transmission dipstick. I'm going to pause this with the camera. It's very difficult to see and get a contrast because of the stamping is black on black. If you look on the end of the dipstick, you can see that it says cold. That's the fill level when the engine is cold. But if we go on, you see there's a cross hatch area and it says hot. That's the area that the fluid must be in when you meet the other conditions that are stated on the dipstick. Let's go along. Check in park engine idling vehicle level transmission hot must be in cross hatch do not overfill and then it states to use dextron 3 only and that's the information that's on the dipstick fluid in good condition should be bright pink fluid that needs replacing will be darker with possibly a pink tinge transmission fluid that hasn't been changed in a long time will look very dark and may smell burnt and definitely needs changing so we're going to take a sample of our oil and then just put it on some tissue. So now we've got a white tissue to give us a contrast so we can see what condition the transmission fluid is in. As you can see, my transmission fluid needs replacing according to the chart. It's maybe just to the left of needs replacing, still not bad. So this next step I'm going to add a whole can of Seafoam Hydrotune, replace the transmission dipstick. Now I'm going to take this car for a spin for 30 miles. So yesterday I drove for 35 miles with a can of sea foam added to the transmission fluid. I think I've found all of the equipment that I need to do this job. I have a new oil pan with a drain plug in it and I've also purchased a magnet to try and catch the particles. The only provision on this is if it doesn't interfere with anything such as the filter may or may not be able to be fitted. It's a strong magnet. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't get it out without a screwdriver. So we have a new oil pan with a drain plug. After I've finished, I'm gonna add a can of sea foam again. I've got my new AC Delco transmission filter. And as part of the kit, you get the filter, which happens to stick to the magnet. That's interesting. A gasket. I don't know if it's, I think it's rubbery. And then there's the seal, which I think probably fits over there. That's the new oil pan filter and gasket. 
before I start the job I'm going to spray the two 10mm nuts that are on the side of the heat shield because they seem rather tight and hard to move so I'm going to give them a spray before I start doing any more work. I've got a little bit of scotch bright pad and I'm going to get a plastic scraper just in case I need one to try and clean the transmission case free of any gasket material or debris or anything like that so that's a very light abrasive pad. I've got some new transmission fluid. You're going to need a 15mm socket for the skid frames underneath, a 10mm side wrench for doing the heat shield, a 13mm wrench for doing the transmission pan bolts and then another socket for, for driving up. I have the vehicle on ramps, it's going to be tight down there and I've chocked the rear wheels as you normally do. The foot brake is on, I'm going to um, disconnect the battery. So I've had an appropriate bolt into the negative terminal so that I can actually clip onto that. So as you can see underneath there's not a lot of room to work with here. There's the heat shield and there's the, the two bolts that hold the heat shield in. So to empty our transmission fluid using the pump, we've got a pipe here which just slides down the transmission dipstick hole. So that's now bottomed out, probably hitting the pan. We'll next connect up the pump. On the pump are some arrows that show the direction of flow. Pipe that goes down the dipstick to this port here. Next we connect the output pipe to the output port. To make life easier I have an old empty can of Mobile One uh, which is calibrated in litres so you can see up the side one two three four so we're still going we're emptied about a litre and a half so we're getting to, towards the bottom of the pan I, I feel So we've barely emptied two litres of fluid through the dipstick. I'm just going to try pushing the pipe in a bit more, see if we can improve on that. As you can see, I managed to remove two litres of fluid, which kind of indicates it's got at least another two and a half litres of fluid in the pan, which means we've got to be a bit careful while we're underneath with the pan because there will still be fluid in there, I think. The next job is to remove the skid frame, which is in the way. I'm hoping I don't have to remove the front bit, just stacking it off. You can remove the skid frame without taking the skid plate completely out. Just need to lower it down a little bit to get the bracket over that mount that's on the end there. So now I've got to remove the remove the heat shield. We removed the skid frame and the heat shield plate. I'm just going to check what's on the other side. Now it's the transmission pan bolts. I'm not sure how much fluid is going to be in here. It's a bit of an unknown quantity. According to my count, there are 16 13 mm bolts holding the transmission pan in place. This one here was very difficult to remove, which makes me tend to think that it has been slightly cross-threaded when it was put in, which makes me tend to think this pan has been off before, which is in some ways good news. But you can get in with a long socket and a wrench above the pipe. So now I'm going to go around and remove all of the bolts except for a couple at this end so the pan can drop down. That's the plan anyway. I've removed the majority of the bolts. I have two left at the front and I feel that this pan will be still stuck to the transmission. So now we've just got to remove these remaining two bolts. One tiny hitch is we can't get past this bracket here in a dead drop it just won't come down there's just literally just a fraction of an inch I'm gonna give it another go but the pan is full of fluid probably because the cars tilted back and my extraction pipe doesn't come down deep enough I'm not quite sure what holds that bracket on I need to get a torch problem I have this bracket is slightly in the way which we can leave a out of the way but then I just cannot get the pan past this exhaust pipe 
There's just no way I can get it out. I'm going to give it one more go, but I, I just don't think it's going to come out. The panel will come down and we can manoeuvre it around, but we just can't get it over past the exhaust. There's just no way that's coming coming out of there. We just can't. We must be within a quarter of an inch of movement there, but we just can't do it. With the exhaust out of the way, made taking the transmission pan off really easy and you get a much better access. Taking the exhaust off, it's not that difficult. It gives you so much more freedom. When I look at my oil pan, which was pretty full still with transmission fluid, there is a magnet in the bottom there, so we know that a magnet fits. And there is like a bit of a thick paste on there, but no, no heavy metal particles, just general wear. And there's a film in the bottom of the pan. Now we're going to check to make sure that our new pan is the same fitting as the old one. So here we are with the two pans side by side. They seem to be similar fittings. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be compatible. So I'm going to go ahead now and change the filter. Fitting a fluid pan with a drain plug will make fluid changes much easier. Most important, don't forget to fit the magnet. As it happens, the magnet fits over the top of the drain plug, so it's exactly the same configuration as the old one. Before I change the filter, I poured the remaining fluid into the container, and now we've gone up to three and a half litres. And I reckon I lost about half a litre on the floor, and I'm actually covered in transmission fluid with the best will in the world, upside down, trying to manoeuvre a pan without spilling it was very difficult. It is only an approximate measure. That's um, kind of encouraging, I guess. We can see the old filter. I'm just going to see how easy it is. Oh, that came out really easily. And there's some fluid in that too. So I'm trying not to spill it. Put it over to one side. There's the old filter. Where did it actually connect to? I think that may be the old connector. I've emptied the contents of the transmission fluid filter into the canister and that's taken us up to four litres and I would reckon that the other 0.75 of a litre is what I've mopped up off the floor at least half a litre I would say the fluids seems to add up with what we calculated so we've got a little bit of corrosion around the flange of the box now when I did the bolts some of them were tight some of them were very loose I have to say I've never had any leaks that I've noticed but if you can see I've been round the case I'm going to clean it up with some um, IPA before we start this is now silky smooth it was very cruddy I have to say definitely need to clean it up we're good now to get the oil pan new oil pan and try fitting it. Yesterday was a little bit of a problem. I found that I'd actually purchased the wrong filter and so there are two types of pan. There's a shallow pan which is basically the depth of just this bit really so we've got this extra deep pan here and you would have thought that a shallow pan filter would have fitted in a deep pan. It's irrelevant really whether it did or it didn't. You need the correct filter. Fortunately, I was able to get one here in the UK without having to import one from, from the US. That has now come in. As a protection for the transmission, I put the new transmission pan on there and just put it in place so that it protected the internals from the elements. I'm now going to take this pan off and the next step will be to remove the little connector that um, joins the filter to the transmission. Although I thought the original one was okay, just as a matter of good practice, I'm going to change it. Here you can see the seal, which looks in pretty good nick, I still have to say. Removing the seal was trickier than anticipated. It just wouldn't pull out, and it's because the seal is actually press fit. Now in the diagram, you can see where the old seal is in place, and you see the red arrows which go to the corner of that D shape where the seal sits in. And if you get in with a small diameter punch and just tap inwards, avoiding the aluminium 
transmission and just catching the edges of the seal, you can make the seal collapse. Once you have the sides of the seal collapsed, you can then grab the inner part of the seal and pull it out with a pair of long nose pliers. It should come out quite easily. Avoid touching the bore of the seal hole because any scores on there could produce a leak. After much tapping, I managed to fold in the outside of the little seal. And I have to say, I don't like doing that. It's very difficult not to leave a witness mark in the casing, but I don't think it's going to matter because the new one will press in. Regarding the new one, what you need is a socket to tap it in with. A 15mm impact drive socket is just about the right size. So what I'm going to do is smear a little bit of transmission fluid around the seal and then tap it in. If you take a look at the picture, you can see that the diameter of the D-shaped recess is 26.25 millimeters approximately. You'll find a 19 millimeter socket measures about 25.89, which is just smaller than that D-shaped recess. The seal itself measures 25.8 millimeters in diameter. So the socket is just slightly larger than the seal. You'll also notice on the bore of the seal hole, there is a one millimeter chamfer outlined in yellow. The important thing is to get the edge of the seal inside that chamfer and then just start tapping it in place. Don't try to force it too much. If it's not going in easily, then you're doing it wrong. Once you've got it started, you'll find that the seal will tap in easily. As you can see, the seal is tapered slightly to make insertion easier. Start on one edge and just see if you can get one edge of the seal started and then work your way around the, the diameter of the seal and gradually get it aligned. Don't be in a hurry. This operation took me about half an hour. This is by far one of the trickiest jobs. Getting it out was tricky, and getting it back in was tricky. I did say a 15 mil socket was around about the right size, but if you notice, it actually fits inside the flare of the seal, which is no good. What you really need is something like this one here which is a, a 19 mil socket which is the largest one you can get inside the transmission casing and then just by tapping lightly around you'll never get it dead square because what you really need is a, is a proper tool but by just pressing and just tapping around the rim and once you've got it started it's relatively easy to tap all the way home so I've now got the new seal in there at long last it took me ages here is a more detailed examination of the seal it may help you understand how it works its construction and what you can and cannot do as you can see it's a steel metal shape which has been pressed in, into a kind of top hat with that lip on it and that lip fits into that one millimeter chamfer that's in the borehole in the transmission casing you can see where i've tapped in with a punch and what you're trying to do is just tap on this very, very, very fine edge. The in, inside of the metal pressing is coated in rubber. And you can see I've cut away just to show you the shape. So it's this ring here on the top that actually forms the seal. And it's hard to inspect because it's right at the bottom of the hole. The rubber is quite tough. I think it's probably something like nitrile or something like that. And, and exactly how they wear, I'm not too sure, but I will do some research and put that in with this post. So what I'm gonna do is run a little bit of transmission fluid around the filter spout, just to make it slide in a bit easier. Okay, so now I have the new filter it's just gonna offer it to the hole I did pre-grease the spout with a little bit of transmission fluid but I'm gonna need two hands to, to put this in this time um, I, I offered up my old transmission pan just for the moment to see if the geometry looks right and it does so everything looks good I'm just going to check the cleansiness of the outside area of the transmission casing to make sure it's squeaky clean and then I'm gonna fit the new pan. I've checked the surface all the way around here, cleaned it all the way around 
and it's nice and smooth and flat and clean no marks or anything it's really nice and there's the, the filter in place next step fit the pan and the seal I've cleaned the new pan and I've cleaned the gasket too just in case there was any debris on the gasket it should now be squeaky clean all of the bolts have been put into the pan and loosely tightened up and they're going to talk them up to a pattern that I've found and adapted for this pan. Torque up the 16 bolts in the sequence shown. I've been around in my star pattern and tightened all, the, all of the bolts to 11 foot pounds. The manual calls for 8. I've seen 12 and 13 in different areas so I've split the difference. 11 seems fine. But what was important was that I went around and tightened them all in my pattern and then I went and rechecked the pattern and found that they'd settled in a little bit. It's been round a couple of times and now they were all exactly 11. Next I'm going to check the drain plug which I have a feeling is 25 but I'm just going to go and check the figure. I removed the uh, drain plug just to make sure that the copper washer was on there. I also put a coating of transmission fluid on it just to make it start. I've checked the torque settings from Hummers that do have pans. It's a 17mm AF, so I'm going to torque this up to 25 foot pounds. We'll double check that, and that's pan fitted. Okay, the transmission pan is in with a drain plug, which we never had before. That's a nice rubber gasket going all the way around. I just hope and pray it doesn't leak. Before I get to um, putting any fluid in, but I'm going to crack this open and just see what kind of debris we've got in there. This wasn't quite the easiest component to get apart. And there may be particles of black plastic on the top here like these. And, but what I'm going to do is actually prise inside the filter, which I think is where the debris may be. So looking inside, I've cut away this panel here. There are one or two metal fragments in there. But we might expect this, you know, for if this is the first time this filter has ever been changed, there are some metal fragments, nothing major, bits that have probably worn off, but it's not completely filled with debris. Am I happy about this? I don't know. I need to investigate further to see how bad that is. Four litres of Dexron 6 have been added. Next I have to reconnect the exhaust system. Before I can run the Hummer, I need to make sure there's no leaks under gravity. If it leaks under gravity, we've got no chance when it's being pressurised. Now I'm just going to mention something. Now I don't know whether this is from factory or if the transmission fil filter has been changed before. I think it has. I think this transmission filter has been changed. The reason why I say this is because this bolt here which is very difficult to get at once you've got the exhaust in, it was fairly well chewed. You could run one of the other bolts into the hole and it wouldn't turn, and you couldn't put that bolt in anywhere else. I ended up running an 8mm tap through there, which was easy to do, which meant that the another bolt would go straight in. But then I had to redress with a very fine diamond grip file the actual thread of this bolt here which goes in nicely now and everything's been talked up. It suggests to me, uh, I can't believe they would have done that in the factory. That seems good so far, no leaks, just put the exhaust back in. I'm just going to refit the heat shield that goes on the right hand side of the pan. The two 10mm AF bolts have now been put in for the heat shield, um, that's back in place. It's not that difficult to get the bolts in actually, you can reach in with your hand and just spin them up. So that's that job done. So the new transmission pan is in. The exhaust has been connected back up with a new seal to the manifold. The O2 sensors have been connected. The rear exhaust pipe has been connected. The skid frame has been put in. And as far as I can tell, we're good to run some tests. Next job is to reconnect the battery. So as I mentioned, four liters of Dexron 6 has been added, which is not gonna be enough but I'm going to run it through the tests. I think what we have to do is quickly back it off the ramps, get it on the flattened level, get the engine warm, run it through the gears a bit whilst we're stationary, 
and then run it till it's up to temperature on the flat and then we can check the transmission fluid level. I've checked the transmission fluid level with the engine hot on the level and we're a little bit below. I'm going to add a can of seafoam which came as a recommendation from some experts in this field. So I'm going to do that and then recheck the fluid and then add as much fluid as I, as I need to until we get the fluid levels right. We cannot drain the entire transmission system and can only change as much fluid as the amount we actually drained. So to achieve good quality transmission fluid, we need to change it more than once. If the vehicle is horizontal and the transmission system filled to the correct level, then the nominal amount of fluid that can be drained is 4.7 litres. As can be seen from the graph, the more fluid that can be changed in one visit, the better the fluid purity, the fewer the number of changes and the less the cost. One technique that can be used to increase the amount of fluid drained is to first drain the pan with the vehicle horizontal, then jack up each corner in turn to try and dislodge as much fluid as possible. After each fluid change, drive around 100 miles to make sure the new fluid has fully mixed. It can be seen from the chart that if we can increase the amount of fluid change to 5 litres, we can achieve 85% purity with just three changes. Thank you for watching this video. Please give the thumbs up, share and subscribe. Oh, and don't forget the alert bell.